Paycor provides payroll and HR software to small and medium businesses. We have over 40,000 clients in a variety of industries. And from recruiting and onboarding to benefits and payroll, our clients want to make an impact in their organization, and we help them do that. We're a fast-growing company, and we have plans to grow even faster. And to accomplish that, it's critical that we are always focused on improving sales productivity. And GeoPoint helps us do just that. GeoPoint is an amazing tool that's helped us to be more productive in the field. It's helped us to increase the number of prospects that we're getting in front of. And it's just amazing technology that helps us be more prepared in the field. My team absolutely loves using GeoPoint. It saved them a tremendous amount of time. And so we've seen almost two and a half more drops per week when we're using GeoPoint. I use GeoPoint on my mobile app on an almost daily basis. It actually is very strategic in the ability to optimize a specific route and get through that route in the most efficient way possible. It allows me to visualize my geographic territory, see where the concentration of my prospect accounts are, and know where I'm gonna spend the majority of my time so that I'm actually able to hit a much higher level of accounts that I would not otherwise be able to hit. Because of its integration with Salesforce, I'm able to click directly into the opportunity that I'm working on and add notes, add the visit, and log the drop that I may have done to that location. GeoPoint is an integral part of our sales process and the utilization of it across our sales team is really impactful in us being such a successful organization. As a territory analyst, I help create and equalize everybody's territories within their separate regions. It's really important to have GeoPoint so that we can manage the data so that our sales leaders can focus on managing their people. GeoPoint has been a big win for our sales organization. When we were evaluating a mapping solution, we looked at a couple of different options and ultimately we selected GeoPoint. These days, users are looking for intuitive, easy to use technology and GeoPoint is just that. If you have sellers who are out in the field, GeoPoint is a no-brainer. It really helps them be more productive, maximize their time, and make sure that they're optimizing their client visits while they're out in the field. We were just a bunch of nerdy kids who ignored the haters. We took their ridicule and we built on it. And when some of us gave up, well, we built on that too. Built resilience, built on a mission to make things a little better every day until the users came. Then the haters were VCs who scoffed at our audacity. This just isn't the way things are done. But we kept building. Users turned into teams, turned into companies, running their entire businesses on our apps. Then the software giants came after us. We weren't proven, we weren't fully featured, our radical cloud model wasn't secure, but we built on. And today, as companies adopt the cloud to move faster, teams are finding themselves slowed down by each other's efforts. The skeptics are claiming we'll never develop innovation at scale. But now, DevOps have come to the cloud, ushering in a new era of transformation. Companies can release on demand across hundreds of environments innovating faster with fewer conflicts and fewer disruptions. There will always be challenges. There will always be naysayers. And we'll build on. So the, the topic for today is building a Heroku app with LWC open source. All right. so. Uh, myself, Taranjit Singh, I am working with Salesforce as a demo engineer and uh, I work with customers on building the art of possible demos to show how you can really implement the Salesforce in their organizations. Uh, I'm available on Twitter and LinkedIn. You guys can connect to me on there. Okay, so here's an agenda what, what we're going to do today. We'll start with introdu introduction to the LWC open source. We'll understand how, what's that, and then we're going to understand uh, what is Heroku. Uh, just brief information about Heroku. With that, we'll move to a coding session. We're going to develop a Heroku app using Lightning Web Component open source, and then we're going to deploy this app to the Heroku platform. 
and in the end i'm going to share some resources which you can refer to to get started building your own lighting web component open source app in your organizations so let's get started with what is lwc open source so the recent innovation in web standard is incredibly exciting so many new features that requires framework now come standard in the stack you no longer need a proprietary component model or a proprietary language extension or any models proprietary uh, to build all those things so previously when we used aura we built a lot of these things in our framework but now as these are all part of web standards we don't need to implement them in our framework we can just focus on what is more important to our uh, our framework so uh, the the standardization of the core stack opens a door to a new breed of framework that framework whose major task is no longer to fill the gaps in the core stack but to provide a thin layer of a specialized service on top of our standard stack that is suitable for a large scale apps so if you talk about lwc lwc is the implementation of this new breed of this lightweight framework built on the web standards with lwc you can not only build uh, components on salesforce platform but using lwc open source you can even build apps on platforms like heroku google cloud and all those things so if you see the picture on my screen a uh, lot of features are now part of web standards like web components templates shadow dom what only we have implemented in lightning web components is security that's very important for salesforce uh, the base components uh, like uh, the lightning base components uh, these are not right, uh, currently available with open source but with our um, salesforce lwc you can use it and the lightning data service only these three things are part of our framework the rest everything is uh, in a web standards so, so it makes this framework very lightweight and uh, easy to use now that we understood what's lightning uh, web component open source let's go and see what's heroku so uh, you might know that lightning platforms allow you to build employee facing apps to customize and extend your sales for crm with heroku you can go even further building pixel perfect applications for a customer in open source language like java ruby python php javascript go whichever language you are comfortable with you can go and build apps using those those languages so we talk about heroku heroku is a platform service which means you don't need to worry about building and running an infrastructure for application with ready to use plugins uh, you can stay connected with your data inside your salesforce so we have a, a salesforce connect heroku connect a lot of plugins available in the marketplace for heroku which helps you to build your apps much faster without worrying about those uh, uh, building them again from scratch many customer leverage uh, heroku for powerful web and mobile application that drives increased customer engagements so there are a lot of use cases which you can uh, use heroku for and build apps using your open source languages all right so now we understood what's lightning web component open source and we, how heroku helps us to deploy those applications to our uh, server so now let's start and <coughs> create a app using lightning web component open source so uh, here's a use case uh, there's already a developer who built the agenda app so let's example there's an event happening for uh, virtual dreaming similar uh, similar type of conference is happening and you have to build the app which will show the list of sessions happening with the time and the location of that session uh, the developer the salesforce developer built this component inside the salesforce app and uh, the best way to expose this is you can use communities or you can just or uh, put them on heroku so now the, now the best part about this is this is built on lightning web component and uh, now what the requirement is they want this to deploy to our heroku platform so that our end customers can or our end users can go and see the sessions and they can sign up for that for that let's do one thing let's go and create a, a new app for a uh, lightning web component open source for that uh, there is a a package which is available on yarn as well as on your npm that name is create lwc app 
So you can go and use these uh, packages and you can deploy this uh, to your local system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build this app using Node.js and for the front end, we're going to use uh, Lightning Web Component open source. And uh, I'm also using Salesforce, oh, sorry, Heroku CLI so that I can easily communicate with my Heroku platform for deploying my code, for retrieving the latest changes and managing all those things. So I'm using Heroku CLI for that. And for this uh, dependency management, you can use NPM or Yarn, whichever you're comfortable with. And for uh, developing the code, I'm using Visual Studio Code. So uh, that's something which I prefer working with. So to get started with, I just need to pull the code to my local system. So here's a command for that, npx, create LWC app, and then I can name the app. So let's example, we are building this for virtual agreement conference. So I just named the app. And uh, once you do that, it will ask you a few questions uh, that you need to define what's a package name. Uh, by the way, I selected the default one. Description, the author, version, license, and uh, if there's any GitHub repository where the code is available. And now you have option to select, do you want to deploy this with YARN or NPM? So I'll go with YARN for this. And again, you have an option to select TypeScript or JavaScript. So if you're comfortable with TypeScript, you can go with that. Else you can go with JavaScript. So I'll go with JavaScript for now. And uh, yeah, what I do is basically start pulling all the data, all the code to my local repository local system so I can start building the app. So this will take some time. What I will do is I'll go back. I've already uh, set up this on my local system. So I'll show you how it looks like when all the code comes from this repository to my local system. So this is the structure of the code uh, that we got. It's a, a Node.js application with a front end uh, with Lightning Web Component open source. And uh, if we go to SRC, we have two folders. One is for client, other one is for server. Server is our Node.js server, which will allow us to uh, handle all the requests, to interact with Salesforce, and all those things we can do from our server side. And client is where we will write all our Lightning Web Component open source uh, uh, code. So we have modules, that's basically a Lightning Web Component module. So currently we have two modules in this one. I'll explain you those also. And these are the index HTML and JavaScript files. Those are responsible when the page loads. This, these are the files which, uh, which initiates the client side. And uh, currently we have two components. Let me go to the first one, the HTML, uh, sorry, app, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. There are three files that we are using. So if you go to app.html, if you guys have uh, seen uh, Lightning Web Component code previously, you guys be aware about the structure of this code. This is the exact same structure uh, of Lightning Web Component that we built inside Salesforce Org. We start with template and uh, the standard HTML code we have written. And this is where we are calling another component. Basically, the another uh, Lightning Web Component uh, from here. My greeting, and then we're passing some parameters. And rest, everything is a standard HTML code. If we go to JavaScript, this is where we are going to write all our JavaScript code for handling all the requests and making API calls and all those things. And we are importing Lightning Elements, which is part of the LWC package. So this will help us to do a lot of things that to manage our Lightning Web Components, uh, sending data from a client to server and all those things. So there are a lot of uh, classes available which you can use. And then we have the CSS, a standard CSS file, which uh, you can use for all your stylings. And then we have a greeting uh, Lightning Web Components. It's similar to that. Uh, it just have a, a, a normal standard HTML code. And in the JavaScript, we are uh, doing some uh, JavaScript functionalities to uh, show some data on the UI. So it's a standard plain JavaScript we are using. And uh, then the CSS. So let's do one thing. Let's try to run this app on our uh, local host just to see how it works and what all we can see there. So to, to do that, uh, I'll just say yarn watch, which will basically run my client side as well as my server side on my local host. 
so uh, yeah if you see say locals started and now it's initializing the liking web component server so this got deployed to my local host let me go and open the local host yes now you can see here uh, this is a component which i was talking about the second one the greeting component which greets the user in all the languages and this is other component which was uh, the wrapper component of this greeting the app component is a pairing and under that we have this component so we have deployed successfully the code to our local system and it's running perfectly now what we need to implement is we need to implement the app which will show us the details about the sessions and the user can also search the session there so these are the things we have to implement and the data of all the sessions is available in our Salesforce org. So if you see, we have a sessions uh, table, which has a list of all the sessions from where this component also pulls the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and uh, for my server side, uh, let's implement some, uh, let, let's add some piece of code. I'm just copy pasting the code, just for the, like we have very less time here. Um, so yeah, so if you see here, I have actually using JS Force library and JS Force library will help me to uh, interact with the Salesforce or from a Node.js application, right? And uh, what we can do is we can then just log into a Salesforce or using JavaScript and using Node.js. So for that is a code, which basically uh, creates a connection to my uh, Salesforce or here the username, passwords and token all those informations I have passed and it will create a connection to my Salesforce org. And uh, now I'll just say uh, login to my Salesforce org from Node.js. So that's the code and you can refer to JS Force library and you can get all these codes uh, available and how you can call them. Right. So the next step for us is uh, we have to call, um, we have to create an API that can be called from our client side which will return the data uh, about all the sessions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, the default port from here and it's just a, a normal uh, blank module we have. And what we need to do here is we need to create an API. And what that API will do is it will basically return us list of all the sessions. I'll explain you that. So I have written a new API slash API slash sessions and this will make a SQL query. That's the SQL query I've written. And it will say uh, the connection dot query and just pass the query. This will make a SQL query to our Salesforce org, retrieves all the data, put into a wrapper and returns back to the API. So let me just save this uh, index.js file. So our service is ready. Service ready to give all the data from our Salesforce org to our API. Now let's go back to our client. And uh, let's go back to our first component, which was app.html. So what we need to do here is we need to create a UI, which will basically show all the sessions in a tabular form. For that, uh, I'll just copy paste some code. I'll just remove the default code and uh, replace it with the new one. So what we have done here is it's just a normal uh, like the features of Lightning Web Component where we can use templates. It's a for each we have done on a key and uh, we're getting all the data and just iterating all, all those data and showcasing on the screen. And uh, now from where we get all these sessions, variables and everything, that's something we have to implement in a JavaScript. So if I go to JavaScript, let me just copy paste some code here. So if you see here in our uh, JavaScript, connected portrait is something which, is, which will get called as soon as our component renders on the UI. So once you render that, what we're doing is we are getting a data from slash API slash sessions. That's the API endpoint we have built in our server. So we are just uh, calling that API and getting all the session records and storing in this uh, session variable. That's something we have done in this connected pathway. And there's one more feature we are implementing, which is basically for searching. So in this, what we have done is we have written our own input uh, function, the listener, and I've handled this in this function. 
what I've done here is uh, whatever data the user enters, we're going to search those data in, in this all sessions variable and uh, filtering all those things and returning it back to the same sessions um, attribute. And again, that renders back to our UI. So that's the only thing we have implemented here. Uh, and once we are done, let me just start my server once again. And I think, yeah, we also need to change the CSS, uh, but let's try to run the app first and then we can change the CSS to make it look better. So yeah, the server is running now. Right. Hey, Taran, here, hey, quick time, quick time quick check, two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. Okay, we have two minutes. Okay. Yes. All right, so, yes. all right, thank you. So this is how the data is looking like when we are showcasing on the UI. Let me quickly change the CSS. And um, if we just see now, uh, the, the UI looks much better now. And you can even search the, um, the conference uh, session here. Now let's move to our next point uh, quickly. Now we have seen how we have built the app uh, on a local system. Now let's do one thing, let's deploy this app on Heroku. For that, uh, there's a, let me just do one thing. Let me just stop the server. I'll make a git add, git commit, my first app. And uh, this will commit the code to my uh, git, local git. And then I can push this code to my Heroku server. This is done. Uh, let me push this to the master. Yeah. So as this will take some time to push this code to Heroku, let's uh, go to our next slide and we'll come back here and see uh, how it looks like when we uh, open this app from our Heroku server. So yeah, we're going to see how it looks like. And next we have is Right, some of the resources which you can refer to. So here is a trail mix, which you can refer to. It has some of the uh, trail heads modules, which you can try with and building a like web company apps uh, using open source. And here are some YouTube videos, which you can see and uh, learn from there. We can take some questions until the time this gets deployed to our server. Yes, Taran. So uh, I see a lot of people raising their hands please post your queries in the Q&A window. That way we can address them. So the first question is, is there any limitation in LWC uh, open source compared to native LWC? All right, I think that's a good question. Uh, right now there's no limitation. Uh, we don't have a locker service there in Lightning Web Component open source. You can uh, use all the features like that. Um, that's what I have tried right now. Yeah, but if there's any specific limitation you are talking about, you can just let, let us know. We can see if that limitation is there or not. But most of the limitations will not be there. And there's no uh, governor limits also. You are not building on Salesforce platform, so there will be no governor limits. Uh, but if you make an API call to your Salesforce or, uh, then that limit will uh, be there. I hope that answers the question. Okay. The next question is, which VS Code theme you are using? Uh, so we have a Salesforce theme. Uh, I think it's the Astro theme, something like, I uh, need to check that. So I'm using that theme. So if you just go to extension and search for Salesforce theme, there is a, a theme which we have. Uh, I think it's called the Astro theme or something like that. And you can check. So yeah, that's what I'm using right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, how to deploy the LWC app into Heroku? All right, so I just mentioned this right now. What we have done is we have pushed to our local Git. And uh, uh, if you see my Heroku, I've already created an app. And uh, below are the steps which you can refer to. Just log into Heroku from your CLI. Uh, just uh, connect your local code and uh, then just push. So basically this is for cloning, okay. So just push your code to local Git and then push it to Heroku master. 
so we have the clear step with this so uh, this is similar to how you push a regular app to heroku uh, you just need to push the same way if you see uh, right now this this is got pushed to my heroku yeah so i use that three four commands and that makes the app push to this heroku let's you guys can see now the app is now available on this url and uh, we just use a standard git uh, functionalities and the heroku cli uh, commands okay thank you tarandeep for that but the next question the next is question can we use all base components, all base components of lwc in lwc oss uh, no currently there is no way to do that uh, so you need to build everything from scratch but yeah you can use a standard uh, template all those uh, features that lwc provides but not the base components okay can you put the trail mixes and the YouTube links that you share in the resource slide on the chat window so that you, the audience can uh, leverage them right away? Uh, I guess you will also be sharing this deck over your Twitter or any of your social channels. Yeah, and for the recording of the session, it will be available post the event after six to nine weeks. Oh, where do I have to put this slides and everything? In the in the chat window, yeah, just the links that you referred in the uh, right. resources slide. Yeah, I shared everything for everyone. You can refer to this. Thank you. Thank you. The last question is: Is there any setup to be done on Heroku side before deploying the app? Uh, no, not required. You just need to create a normal uh, Heroku app, and once you start deploying the app, Heroku automatically identifies that it's a node.js and nwc because you have defined everything in your package.json and all those areas you can define whatever app it is and uh, how it should render and what's the uh, what what type of api you have to run so all the things that you have configured in your uh, package.json so you need not need to define anything again to your your heroku app I hope that answers the question. Yes, Tarandip. I think that's all we have from the question side.